In this video, we're going to be talking about the remainder in connection with Taylor polynomials. So we know that our Taylor poly polynomials provide a good approximation to our function f near the center a, and that the Taylor polynomials give better and better approximation as um, n increases. So the question that we want to answer is how accurate are these approximations for different values of n? So for answering this question, we need to give our definition of our remainder in a Taylor polynomial. And this will be connected to the idea of the remainder that we had for infinite series. So we're going to let Pn here be the Taylor polynomial of order n for our function f. Then we can say that the remainder in using Pn, the nth polynomial, to approximate f at the point x is that we have our n of x equal to f of x minus Pn of x. Okay, so the remainder is equal to the difference between the function and the nth order um, Taylor polynomial. So the idea is that this compares to the situation where we had our remainder for just infinite series as being equal to s minus sn. So sn, the partial sum, is like our pn, our nth polynomial, because it's when we're thinking about this as compared to the, the power series, the first n terms of the power series is our nth order polynomial. So that's like the nth partial sum. Um, and then we're going to see that that for certain um, ranges of, of x, our power series um, would converge to some, some function. And so that's like s, the sum of our um, infinite series for, for a convergent series. OK, so I have this rn of x is equal to the function minus pn of x. Um, one note that we want to make here, um, we say that the absolute value of the remainder, so the absolute value of the remainder, the absolute value of rn of x here, um, is the error made in approximating f of x by pn of x. Okay, so we know that we use the terms remainder and error um, to mean the same thing. Okay, so we're gonna need two theorems in order to talk about um, our estimate of the remainder. So first we have Taylor's theorem. And this theorem says the following. So let's take our function, say our function has continuous derivatives up to the n plus 1th derivative on an interval containing that center point a. Um, for all x in the interval, we have our function is equal to the nth order Taylor polynomial plus a remainder. That's just taking this remainder definition and uh, solving it for, for f of x. We have our function is equal to the Taylor polynomial plus this remainder part. Um, then our remainder has the following formula here. The remainder has this form of the n plus 1th derivative at f um, evaluated at c divided by n plus 1 factorial times x minus a to the n plus 1 for some, whoops, for some point c between x and a. Okay, so we have this theorem. So let's just say a little bit about, about this theorem, maybe how it makes sense, at least for a particular case that we could maybe understand a little bit better. So Note, um, if n is equal to 0, okay, then this formula on the right-hand side would be in terms of the first derivative, and that would actually be connected to the mean value theorem. So let's just say a little bit about um, how this, this theorem could be gotten, at least in the n equals 0 case. So for n equals 0, we can get this result by the mean value theorem. So we're not proving the result in general, but we're just trying to sort of see where this, this comes from, understand it based on some calc one that we have seen before. So the mean value theorem says that if f is continuous on a closed interval, okay, so we're talking about this interval around a, so let's say on the interval from a to x, and differentiable on the open interval from a to x, then there is a C, okay, between X and A. And when I wrote down these intervals, I could have meant the other direction. We know that um, what we're just saying here is that we have some interval from X to A. It could be that A is less than X or that X is bigger than A. So we're just making this little detail here. We could mean either, either order. Then there's a C, okay between x and a so that oops, I would have f prime of c equal to f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. 
Okay, so I was applying the mean value theorem here in this note um, to the interval uh, um, from a to x or from x to a. Um, the mean value theorem in general said if a function was continuous on a closed interval and differentiable on an open interval, then there existed a point in that interval where the slope of the tangent line was equal to the slope of the secant line over the interval. So that's exactly what we're writing down here. Just rewriting this, this would say that f of x is equal to f of a plus f prime of c times x minus a, okay? Okay, and again, we know that our f of x here was equal to p0 of x plus r0 of x. So that's how this is showing that r r0 of x is equal to this f prime of c times x minus a. Okay, so this shows us two things. One is that the, the general proof of this um, nth order um, remainder um, would be based on a mean value theorem type argument. And the second thing is that we're seeing what the what the general form of our, our remainder is. Notice that if I was doing um, an approximation of my, of my function by just the zeroth polynomial, which means just the, the y value at the point, um, the remainder would come from this first derivative at c times x minus a. Um, so the way we can remember our um, this remainder here is that it is basically the n plus one-th term of the Taylor polynomial where a is just being replaced by c there. Okay, so let's look at what we are going to do for the estimate of the remainder. So we have the form of the remainder, what's actually the estimate of the remainder that we'll use um, when we're trying to figure out how good our approximation is. So our theorem on the estimate says the following. So let n be a fixed positive integer. Suppose there exists an m, so this is going to be some number, um, such that the bound on the n plus 1th derivative at c um, is less than or equal to m for all c between a and x inclusive. Then our remainder will satisfy the following inequality. So we know our remainder is defined as the difference between the function and the nth order polynomial. We have our remainder as less than or equal to this m times x minus a to the n plus one all over n plus one factorial. So this here is our upper bound on the remainder. Okay, so let's just say a little bit more about this and then we'll later look at some examples where we can actually use this remainder theorem. So how are we going to get a bound on our absolute um, value of our n of x? So to get a bound on the absolute value of our n of x, what is it that we need to do? Well, we're going to need to find the n plus one-th derivative of x, okay? And then we're going to need to find an m, this is just a number, so that the n plus one-th derivative at c is less than or equal to m for all c between a and x, okay? So this is gonna be for all numbers um, in an interval around our center a, okay? We have to have this bound be, be true, okay? So I gotta find this m, and then I'm gonna plug that into to my formula. Then I'm gonna be able to say our n of x here is less than or equal to whatever this m is, times x minus a to the n plus one all over n plus one factorial. So let's look at some examples in our next videos to see an idea of how this works in practice.